Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here, again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JS Bach's chorale harmonizations. Today we're looking at Wer weiß, wie nahe mir mein Ende, which translates to Who knows how near to me is my end. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward chorale. Um, not too many harmonic intricacies, I would say, in and around the penultimate measure is probably where the most interesting harmonies are happening, but we will talk about it when we get there. Let's just hop right into the analysis. So we have two sharps in the key signature. We start off on B minor. We end on B ma uh, major. I reckon we're in the key of B minor. And we start off with some uh, passing tones in the inner voices before we get another B minor triad, uh, B, D, F sharp, and B. We then have A sharp, C sharp, F sharp, and C sharp, which is our dominant F sharp major. One going to five, six, going back to one is one of the staple opening progressions in Bach's uh, choral music, uh, or especially in the chorales. Uh, we have B, B, F sharp, and D, another B minor triad, root position. And then we have F sharp, A sharp, F sharp, and C, which is our dominant and root position with a passing seventh in the alto. Then we have G, B, D, and B, which is G major in root position. That's a six chord, so we have a bit of a deceptive progression going on before we move to E, E, G, and C sharp, which is C sharp diminished over E. Bach loves two six chords. Bach loves two six five chords as predominant uh, choices for his cadences. Uh, we then have F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, and A, which is a five chord, another F sharp major chord in root position. And interestingly, you would expect this F sharp to resolve up to the to the tonic, right? But no, it goes down to the dominant. He arpeggiates, or he doesn't. I don't think Bach composed this melody. Um, I'm almost 100% certain that he didn't. Uh, he, the melody arpeggiates the dominant triad, and we just get another five chord on the beat, five going to five, which is interesting. So if we look ahead to our next cadence, we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of B minor. Uh, however, I think we have another one of these instances where we have the juxtaposition of the major and the minor triad. Here we have F sharp major, and here we have F sharp minor. And there's no question that these next four beats are in the key of D major. They just sound that way. Five, five, four, three in the key of D major in the melody. So we start off with an F minor chord, that's a three chord, and then we go to B minor, B, D, F sharp, and A, more specifically B minor seven, that's a six, seven chord in the key of D, which is where three wants to go to. And then we have C sharp, A, E, and G, that's A seven over C sharp, which would be five, six, five, and then we end on D major, D, A, D, and F sharp, which is our tonic uh, triad and reposition. Then we have B in the melody, and it starts to sound like we shift back to the key of B minor. We have G, B, D, and B, which is a G major chord. That's a four chord in root position with a passing seventh in the bass before we elide or transition to the key of B minor via this pivot chord, which is now six, which we've seen before. Then we have E, C sharp, G, and B. We know that Bach loves his two, six, five chords. It's a C sharp minor seven flat five over E. Six goes to uh, two often via the cycle of falling fits. Then we have F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, and A sharp. That's a five chord in root position before we cadence on B minor, B, D, F sharp, and B, our tonic. Another two, six, five, or six, two, five. Um, but this time we get the uh, tonic, a very textbook sort of uh, period where we have an antecedent and a consequent, right? We have this uh, weaker cadence here that uh, kind of uh, demands being followed up, right? With resolution in the formal context of the of the tonal chorale, and then we get a perfect authentic cadence. Okay, looking ahead to the B section, we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of D major, so we're looking for a point on which we modulate, and we have F sharp, F sharp, A sharp, and C, so that would be five in the key of B minor, so I don't think we modulate just yet, but this B minor chord that we resolve to, B, F sharp, B, and D, which is our tonic in this context, could also be the sixth chord in the key of D major. Let me make that look more like a D. There we go. Then we have C sharp, E, A, and E. That's another 
5-6 chord. We don't have the 7th in this one though, so this is just a 5-6 chord. So we see 6 going to 5-6 again. Then we have uh, D, D, A, and F sharp, which is our tonic D major, passing 7th in the bass. B, D, B, and F sharp, that's another B minor chord. Even in the key of D major, we're getting a lot of B minor action to keep that sound in our ears uh, with a passing 7th in the bass as well. So we have one going to 6, going to G, D, B, and E, which is E minor 7 over G, which is 2, 6, 5. E minor 7 over G, like I just said. And then we have A, C sharp, A, and E with this anticipation in the melody. That's an A major triad root position. That's our 5 chord. Another 2, 6, 5 to 5 to 1. D major, D, F sharp, A, and D. Okay, excellent. So now we are looking towards the key of B minor as our last cadence is a perfect authentic cadence in the key of B, and we don't have any mid phrase modulation shenanigans where Bach introduces a new key or anything like that. We modulate pretty much straight away to the key of B minor. So this D major triad, D, D, A, and F sharp, I think is three in the key of B minor. Then we see three go to five with some regularity. It's not the most common progression, but we do see it with a uh, some frequency. We have C sharp, E, A sharp, and E. And this isn't even five. This is seven, actually. A sharp diminished over C sharp. So we have what I've been calling a transitive progression, which is this idea that the chord goes against the grain of the cycle of falling fifths. So you have this uh, chord uh, that goes uh, up a fifth rather than down a fifth, or um, yeah, up a fifth rather than down a fifth. Seven typically wants to go to three uh, as it leads the tonic. It, it's a chain that starts on the tonic and ends on the tonic while exhausting all of the notes in the diatonic scale once. So one, four, seven, three, six, two, five, one, as opposed to uh, one, five, two, six, three, seven, uh, four, one, which would be the direction this takes you. However, seven also just wants to go to one, so you can uh, meander around this cycle in different directions as Bach often does. So we have B, F sharp, B, and D, which is B minor in root position, seven going to one, that's what we would expect. And then we have, I think the most interesting three beats, or two beats rather, in the chorale, we have E, G, B, and C sharp, which would be, you know, in anticipation for the cadence, another 2, 6, 5 chord. Uh, a little early, though. We'll talk about it when we get there. We have three passing tones as well, or, sorry, we only have one passing tone. We have a neighbor tone, in an anticipation, and an anticipation. F sharp, F sharp, A sharp, and C sharp, which is a 5 chord, F sharp major. Um, and we could say that that's in passing because we would expect two to go to five. Um, in cases where we have a chord progression that's non-normative, sometimes I think these are accented non-chord tones rather than a subdivision of the harmonic rhythm. It really just depends on context. If you go back and watch some of my other videos, you'll see when I make that distinction, like if a chord is not likely to go to another chord, or if you have to spend too much effort forcing a label onto something, it's something that you could bring up in conversation, but it might not be worthwhile to put down on the page. It might muddy it or um, take away from really the core of the chord progression, which I think this 2, 6 going to 5, um, I, I, I think that that would be um, a normative progression, therefore I put it on the page. But we would expect this to go to 1. If we get a deceptive progression, um, if we look exclusively on the downbeat, we have a uh, Actually, you know what? I'm going to change my analysis that I had on my notes. We have G, F sharp, B, and B, which is an incomplete G sharp, or sorry, did I say G sharp? I meant G natural. G, F sharp, uh, B, and B, which is G7, be another 6, 7 chord here. So we have a, a deceptive progression, so 2 going to 5, going to 6, 7. And then if we take a look at this neighbor tone here in the tenor and this passing tone in the melody, we have G, E, B, and C sharp, which is another two chord, but this time it is in second inversion. Uh, depending on whether you think about this like a pedal, uh, this is a two, four, three chord, uh, which we see definitely not as common as two, six, five chords, but we do see them sometimes, even in cadential situations as well, depending on where the bass is going. 
we might have like 6 going down to 5 going down to 1 and we see a 2 4 3 chord uh, yes uh, but moving along we have F sharp F sharp B and D which is B minor and second inversion so a 1 6 4 chord neighbor tone in the bass before we get F sharp F sharp A sharp and C sharp it's F sharp major in root position that's a 5 chord with a delayed 7th here in the tenor and then we cadence on B major B D sharp F sharp and B our major tonic which Bach often does to end his minor chorales I feel like I say that at the end of every minor chorale um, just to I would imagine lighten the spirits after um, a very sullen chorale very beautiful chorale um, really with very simple harmonies Bach is able to create a very lush texture and that's something that I really admire about Bach's music and the nature of the way he paces his harmonies is even though his music is very harmonically dense, like he's switching chords a lot, he often subdivides the harmonic rhythm, which is already getting a, a new chord each time for the most part. Um, it's it's such a, a beautiful texture. It's a really wonderful time in musical history uh, because the music is really starting to crystallize tonally, but also not fully divorced from the modal tradition. So we get a lot of counterpoint. We get a lot of times where we can't quite attribute a tertian analysis to a chord because it is just a byproduct of intervals that don't fully spell something. So I think it's really wonderful. It's, it, it, it brings a lot of important meaning and significance to the chorales for me individually, and hopefully it does for you too. Uh, but on that note, I will end today's video. It's a relatively short chorale today. Not a ton to talk about, but I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. Uh, yeah, if you're interested in analysis and this is the first video you're coming across, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I upload a video every day. We look at a piece together, and I'm currently working on all the Bach chorales. So if you're interested in going along with me on that journey, feel free to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. You'll get a notification when I upload, which is daily, but not at a regular time throughout the day. It's just when I have free time. That being said, though, um, thank you so much again for watching the video. Thank you so much for continuing to support the channel. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.